Hey woodworkers. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, shaping the seat if you're going to be making a chair and you don't want to do upholstery and you don't want to have just a flat slab. Uh, so shaping the seat is going to be uh, kind of a magical thing that once you've done this thing you can really dial in comfort and uh, all the ergonomics that I think we've come to know and love as uh, chair makers. All right, so a couple things. Uh, gluing up two boards here, uh, try to match grain. I'm trying to think sensitively to when I do start to shape out these areas, how that grain is going to play or affect um, visually what this overall thing is happening. All right, so first thing I've done is I've drawn a center line all the way down front to back, also label the front. At this point, I need to start putting some dimensions on uh, where the, uh, the actual body is going to engage with this piece. So uh, everybody's body is different, so at this point we're doing a best guess, but if I'm making this for myself, this becomes much easier. If I'm making it for a client, this is a conversation that I have after I've done what I'm about to show you. So I'll start shaping these things out getting it to a point, a point where I believe it's comfortable and, uh, and then have my clients come in and test it and, uh, and go from there. Um, it does open a bit of a Pandora's box, unfortunately, in that uh, now your client is going to have input as far as decisions you're making for uh, ergonomics, yes, but then that the, the gate doesn't close there. It doesn't stop with just that. Then there's aesthetic choices that they are starting to make as well, which is fine. We just need to be sensitive to what it is we're doing. Okay, so taking this slab here, you'll notice that I'm going to set this not on my mock-up that I've worked so hard to establish, but I want to have this at a position that's at a similar height to my mock-up, but I'm not really worried about that so much. I don't want it to be so high that the back of my legs will engage onto this front corner. So if anything, lower is better when doing this. So once I've done that, center line is here. I'm sitting down and aligning myself to where this thing wants to be. I want to straighten out my legs a little bit because I really do want the back of my thighs to start getting a sense of where I want this to terminate. If I scoop back, then the back or the corner of this chair is going to get awfully close to um, uh, to the back of your knees, and I think that's really uncomfortable. And I'm an average height, um, about almost six foot. So, um, so I think for me, it's it's specific to where this in engagement is for me. If I have a shorter client or a client that has uh, shorter thighs. Uh, the back of the knee is going to engage here much more rapidly. So I wanted to be sensitive about all of that. So lining myself up, center line is here. I know that I'm going to have a little peak in the center where these two areas for your thighs are, are dished out. I'm also planning on easing the fronts here so that whatever I feel now is going to be minimized once I do the shaping. So I'm not terribly concerned with that. Uh, the next thing I want to do is gauge how wide my hips are going to engage with this seat. And I also want to mark kind of the silhouette of the back of my legs coming out. And so I'll do this generally, trying to do my best to kind of align these things. So now I've got this little peak between my legs, outside here end of my tailbone uh, but I really want to before I get up in this position I want to mark where the lowest point of the C is going to be based on my body and that's where your spine terminates into that tailbone system so I think right around there is where I'm going to need to make a mark to know that that's going to be the deepest point that I need to shape the seat if I make the deepest point up here you're going to start to feel that curve hit your tailbone in a really horrible way uh, if I make it way back here, then it, I've kind of lost a lot of opportunity for really having this curvature follow your body's curvature. So, all right. So wiggling around, I can feel it right here. All right. So cool. Now I have this.
this. You'll see momentarily that this is contrary to what my art faculty taught me. This is probably the best piece of abstract art I've ever made. So I'm glad I'm here to document it photographically. Okay, so I have the broad structure of all of this, which is good. And there's a lot of great videos that talk about <clears throat> how to remove this material. And uh, a lot, of, one of these techniques is to, uh, to make some locations and then start drilling holes at specific depths throughout this area. And then you, the rationale is that you start removing that material. Once you've hit that bottom of the drill bit uh, location, then you're done with that shaping. And I think that is a fantastic process for your second chair. And I think the first chair, you would have no way of knowing the depth of this. And if we're truly making a custom seat that feels good when, when being used, I, I wanna be a little bit more reactive to what is happening here instead of um, uh, forcing or imposing my will onto where the depth of these things and the distance between those depths needs to go. So I have a different approach to this. What you'll see is that I've started this process already on this other face. Um, still see those low points, this little peak shaping out of the back of the seat where my thighs would extend out here. What I'm hoping you can catch, center line is going to be the most important part of this throughout the whole thing. I also want to understand where this material is going to be cut away at the end of it so I can do my joinery and all that. So I need to have this as being a reference or a guideline so I know that I don't want to shape too far past this, if at all, depending on where your joinery is, what kind of joinery. This line I just don't want to cross. So, um, so then you'll notice this crazy grid thing. Uh, what I've done is I've incorporated a technique where I use this little sliding rod, which depending on the time of year, seems to slide back and forth much better. All right, so what I would do with this, let's say I've shaped out a depth on this side and I wanna match it on this side. So it's very easy to align this to the lines that are going side to side. And then I will line up this rod with a line that's going front to back. I'll drop this into that location and I'll flip it around, line it up to the same spots and see if there's any difference there. If there is a difference, then it's asymmetrical and I wanna make sure to start dialing this in a little bit more sensitively. So I found that just a simple trick will allow me to at any location throughout this process, allow me to get specific dimensions that I need to duplicate or replicate. So anyway, I like this approach for again, the first one. Once you have the first one, it's easy enough to replicate that because you can use a similar process here. Let's say this is not in the works, but I could take a depth from a, a fixed point. So the two heights here and here, and then measuring down, great. I'll drill down to that location and to that depth, and then I can start repeating it. But I think without doing a process like this, it's really tricky to just kind of guess where it's gonna be comfortable. Um, two pieces of, of parting wisdom is that this peak seems to be uh, a point that everybody really loves and enjoys playing with. And without this, I think there's benefits, right? We could easily cross our legs or spread our legs over to one side or shift, I should say, shift our legs over to one side if we need to engage that side of the chair, if there's a conversation going on, shifting back and forth with this, it kind of locks your legs into both sides. But having said that, I think this is a really lovely piece uh, of that shaping. And I think with finish on it, it, it starts to really pop and come together. Uh, the mistake, the biggest mistake that I think first time seat shaping folks do is they make this much longer than it needs to be. And that gets intimate in a hurry. So uh, less is more in this application. And just the suggestion of this, I think is enough. And then it'll also fade down into a taper. So uh, be cautious with that. The other piece with this uh, totally escapes me. What was the second piece? Oh, 
uh, the tools, tools to remove this material. And there's, there's a whole bunch of them. Um, and there's arguably much better, better videos than what I would have to show for this. But uh, I really like an angle grinder to start with this. And I have a, uh, a carving uh, cutter head on it. It's a, a Galahad. And you can get in there and start removing a lot of material in a short period of time. And um, anyway, so I like that one a lot. After all that's done, a card scraper, uh, a gooseneck card scraper with a curve, you can really start to tweak and adjust these things. Having said all of that, probably the biggest tool at the end of this process is going to be a, a random orbital sander. I can get in here and kind of fair out all of these areas and start to make this thing really smooth because I don't want to have any undulations throughout the process here. And there's only so much I could do with um, uh, a grinder to remove this material. That's a good first step, regardless of the grit that you're using. Um, so there's that. And I mentioned the card scraper and other things. Uh, there is one other thing that you can use on a, um, uh, an angle grinder, and that is going to be a flap sanding disc so that it has a series of, of uh, different, um, uh, different stages or, or planes of uh, just sandpaper. And so I think that is a good intermediate step to really get in here and start smoothing these things out. Uh, I'm going to shape this one out in an upcoming video here, but I didn't want to um, belabor the conversation. I just wanted to talk about this. Again, there's a million videos out there that already exist about how to do this uh, arguably in the right way. My focus on this video was just how to determine where these locations are and how to repeat it. So hopefully that was helpful. And um, yeah, uh, this is one of those things that's so satisfying as a furniture maker to really be able to do and finesse the heck out of this. And um, it's a caution because it's addictive. Once you start doing this, uh, it's one of those things that you're not going to want to stop and you're going to start to encourage or incorporate those techniques into a lot of your work from the future uh, or in the future, uh, which is great. That's why we're here. That's why we're exploring. All right. Hopefully that was helpful. Talk to you in the next one.